Hi, uh, seems like we are live right now. Uh, let me see. Uh, let me know if you can see me. Uh, you can see my screen right now. Uh, you can see me clearly and you can uh, hear me clearly uh, before I start uh, proper. So if you can just, you know, leave me a comment to say that uh, you're here or you can hear me loud and clear, uh, that will uh, really help. Okay, so we'll 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 give a few more uh, we'll give it a few more minutes before we uh, start uh, proper, as we wait for people to come to join us uh, in this session today. Okay, my name is Howie. I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Forward School. Uh, first of all, uh, I would uh, really like to thank you know MDAC as well as my digital maker for giving me this platform to share an introduction on software engineering, as well as, of course, on Forward School and how we are doing things uh, fairly differently and uh, how we are committed to helping you uh, build a career in tech, okay? So let's uh, give it a, maybe one or two more minutes and then uh, we will get going. So yes, thanks, Iswan, uh, Shadia and uh, Hello, Lena. Uh, thanks for being early um, and showing your enthusiasm here with us today. So yes, um, for my digital maker, if you can see the ticker below, uh, you can check them out uh, at their initiatives at mydigitalmaker.com. Uh, so that's uh, basically their website. Uh, they have been organizing quite a number of webinars here and there. So yeah. Uh, follow their YouTube channel as well as, you know, you can, I'm sure you can find them on Facebook and their website as well. So keep a look up. Okay. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, leave your comments or, you know, just find my name. You know my name, I'm Howie. You can quite easily find me on Facebook or, or of course, you know, follow uh, us, Forward School. Uh, on Facebook or visit our website at forwardschool.co. Okay, so I think we can get started uh, to appreciate those who are who came early and waiting. So uh, yeah, let me get started uh, right uh, now. So today I'm going to be talking uh, on uh, introduction to software engineering as a career. Uh, for those who have just joined us, I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Forward School. My name is uh, Howie. Uh, I would like to start, you know, my sharing with a quote by uh, Jeff Weiner, right? Uh, he says, what matters most uh, is actually relevant skills. So for Forward School, uh, though we encouraged uh, people to go for the paper qualification, so we have nothing against degree, we think that it is great. But what we are also seeing, uh, and as well as the future of work, uh, what's really important is actually uh, your skills. Um, and increasingly so in the digital economy, you know, your skills of uh, programming, coding, designing, you know, UI, UX, data science, and so on and so forth uh, will be extremely important. And so Forward School is all about that. And uh, we believe that practical skills will really um, matter more uh, in the sense that, you know, especially in the new economy uh, and that, you know, traditional education institution might not necessarily be the best place uh, to equip you for the future. Um, you know, I'm sure all of us are, are still at home, some of us, I hope, uh, but many of us are, you know, going back to work uh, during this uh, CMCO period. But this entire pandemic, right, and, and this coronavirus pandemic is an excellent example, right, that technology is and will be driving us uh, forward. Uh, we are indeed in the midst of a profound social and economic transformation. So if you, uh, I'm sure you have already felt it, you know, a lot of businesses, they are not doing very well, uh, especially so if you are a traditional business, if you are not online today, um, for example, like, you know, an 
um, uh, your 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 F and B sector, right? Your cafes, restaurants. If you're not online today, uh, basically you can't do any business. So technology is important. Going online is important, but I'll be sharing more on that uh, later. Uh, but before I dive into you know talking about software engineering and and, and why it is a, a very viable and promising option to take, uh, I need to first and foremost you know talk a bit about our current challenges, right? And uh, where forward school fits in. In the end of the day, for forward school, uh, we have primarily two things that we are trying to solve. Uh, the first is what we know is that the future skills and tech talent gap, right, is wider than you thought. It's more of a national issue. It is not, it is a global uh, problem, right? It's not just a Malaysian problem, but it's a global problem. Wherever you go, right, people are really looking for tech talents. But the issue here is that, you know, there's just not enough talents uh, simply because, you know, the universities are not uh, churning them up uh, fast enough or in some cases are not preparing them well enough because for technology, right, uh, they move very fast, right? In one way or another, it's quite hard uh, for universities or for private colleges or public universities in the sense of private public it's very hard for them to, to catch up. I'll touch more on, on, on that later. The second problem that we are really trying to address and you know the challenge that we have here is that technology roles are very challenging to fill. Like what I've mentioned, uh, it's because you know traditional education institutions, programs are not keeping up fast enough. And this is by no fault of anyone. It's just basically uh, the traditional education institutions are much more focused on uh, academic, right? Uh, so when you go for uh, computer science, for example, uh, I would say that it belongs very much on the pure science, right? It's very textbook based in a sense. Uh, they do have labs and all that, but it's just uh, very difficult to keep up with the pace, right? And there's a few reasons for that. Uh, number one, uh, because it takes a while for any modules, uh, to be approved, that's one. So by the time you know you 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 the, the modules are being changed, you have already graduated, for example, or you know when you spend four years uh, studying for a degree, for that matter, the moment that you come out, perhaps uh, the technology that you are learning it's obsolete. So this is something that we are looking to to solve, and this problem is very real because the industry is uh, feeling it. Okay. And of course, you know, the future of work and, you know, how, you know, why I'm, why we are passionate about software engineering is that we believe that the future of work, of course, it's about expertise and skills, um, you know, not so much on the paper qualification. And there are many, um, you know, articles uh, that, that, that you can find online. You just need to uh, Google. So again, we are not saying that, you know, a degree is uh, not helpful and all that. We think that for certain sector, it is and you must, right? For example, like medical uh, law, to a certain extent, you still need to attend lectures and all that. But when it comes to technology, and if you're really serious in building a career in technology, uh, I think in terms of at this point in time, uh, um, tech education is ripe for this structure for destruction, okay? So I hope that's that's clear. And if I can add, you know, uh, in light of what I will be sharing, it is undergirded by some of these principles, right? Uh, I would like to share uh, this so that we can, we can all learn as well. Uh, the first is, you know, forward thinking number one, which is we must upskill to be creators of these new technologies, not just mere consumers. Now, a lot of times, you know, you, you are a user, right, of uh, your iPhone, your Android phone, you know, your Huawei, your, your Samsung, uh, and you are, I'm sure you are users of tons of websites out there, right? And I'm sure you are users of tons of uh, mobile applications for that matter. But, you know, we believe that all of us can no longer just be users, right? Uh, we need to know at the very least how these things work. Right? 
And the future is going to be digital in a sense. And so if you have the skill to create them, uh, that will give you uh, an advantage. Okay. Second is, um, I think with the rise of uh, digital applications and automation, uh, human skills becomes very important not just digital competencies. I think in terms of digital competencies, all of us can learn, right? All of us can pick up something. But a lot of times people forget that uh, to get things work, to work in teams, human skills is extremely uh, important. And we know that, you know, the 21st century students, you know, these days they must learn how to approach problems from many perspectives. Right and cultivate and exploit creativity, engage in complex communications, right and leverage on critical thinking. Uh, with future of work that is constantly, you know, evolving, uh, we believe at Forward School that these human skills are are going to be much much more important than ever. And so we we do place an emphasis uh, on 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 that, right? So I I will not go into you know the specifics of what human skills that we are looking into. Uh, I can keep that uh, for, for, for the next webinar. Uh, the last is we believe that, um, you know, in terms of uh, the education model, tech education model uh, needs to change, uh, which is why we have a program, which is called a student sponsorship program. It's a new model of tech talent development for the private sector. So I'll touch on this uh, later on, okay? And I'll share more a bit on how we can help you uh, get a kickstart in building a career in tech, specifically in software engineering. Now, before I start to talk about, you know, really what is software engineering, I think it's helpful for me to share a bit of my story. So I started my career, uh, you know, as a software engineer, or, you know, I call myself an applications engineer as well, where I build applications. So that's where I start. I have a formal education on that front. Um, but, you know, by and large, a large part of my career uh, is in the field of product management, digital product management. And why I want to highlight this is because, you know, I want to share with you my journey towards product management. So product management is basically the intersection, right, between technology, business, and UX. UX stands for user experience, right? So when I started my career, I was an application engineer, but my passion has always been design. I like design a lot. I like how, you know, I like website design, uh, mobile application design. And I've always been at the site, you know, when I was studying, I'm building websites. Uh, I'm designing banners for people. Uh, so I, I, I do have a good portfolio of design. I don't have a formal education in design, but I love design. Uh, so two years into my role as a software engineer, I felt that I wanted to grow myself. So I switched my career and I became a digital designer for small screens, right? And, and this was many, many years ago. Uh, and at that point in time, we don't even call it uh, user interface or user experience, right? Uh, we call it human factors interaction. So that, so that was my sort of, you know, area of growth. So I was very into user interface, user experience, designing for the small screens. So I was very much involved, right, uh, in designing MP3 players. At the point of time, it's still uh, black and white. You know, there's no color at all. So, 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 so I have to design. Um, so one of the companies that I worked uh, at is called Creative Technology. They were the inventors of actually the MP3 players. And at the point of time, there's no color and we have to figure out, like, you know, how do you uh, allow people to browse hundreds of songs in a tiny screen, right? So Creative Technologies holds the patent of that interaction um, and basically, which is currently being used by Apple during those times when they launched iPod. Long story short, you know, though Creative Technologies basically lost the consumer market to Apple, uh, creative Technologies actually created some of the uh, patents for the UX. And long story short, if you search it up, right, they sue Apple for uh, hundreds of millions 
uh, for that for that patent infringement. So why I, why I'm sharing that is because you know I started as a software engineer. I would like to grow as a uh, UI UX designer, and then after that, with these two disciplines, uh, it gives me a very big advantage to manage these teams, and that's how I ended up with a role of a product manager. And I must say that you know I have no regrets starting my career as a software engineer or an application engineer. The reason is because with that foundation, right, I can really explore the rest of the fields in the digital economy, and namely what I've touched on, right, the business side of things, the design side of things, and the product strategy side of things, right. And the reason why I can be um, I can be I can be in a good position and 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 I thrive in the product management role. It's because I speak and I understand how technology works, and that's from my software engineering background. And with my passion in design, I can communicate with designers. And my position is a sweet spot, right? And I grow into this. And for many years of my career, I've enjoyed working and building teams of designers, of um, uh, developers, and putting them together and working with them to create uh, exceptional digital products. Okay, so that that gives you a, a sense of, of 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 the roles that you can you can you can imagine yourself uh, to to be, but. For me, I started in software engineering and I think that it is a good place to start. I'm going to show you this video. Um, it is by MDEC actually.
Okay, so that's that's uh, that's a good uh, introduction, right? In a way, uh, about software engineering um, and what what it is, right? I just felt that it is uh, good for me to uh, share it. Uh, it's produced uh, by MDEC and my digital maker, uh, showcasing the promising career of uh, software engineering. I hope that personal sharing uh, by the founder in the video earlier. Uh, give you a very good sense right about uh, the opportunities uh, there is in uh, software uh, engineering so let me let me go on to uh, my next slide right and this is something that a lot of um, people uh, are confused about right when we talk about software engineering okay i must make this very clear it is not computer science right Computer science is about, you know, um, uh, taking complex, like what it's on the quote up there, right? Computer science is about taking complex problems and deriving a solution from math, science, and computational theory. Where else software engineering is very much focused, right, around designing, developing, and documenting beautiful, complete, user-friendly softwares. So in today's digital economy, you know, there are, everyone is using in one way or another a website, whether is it a web application or a mobile application. Now, let me touch a bit more on, on, on this, right? Um, in terms of computer science, uh, computer scientists, right, uh, are first and foremost uh, scientists, right? They possess a deep knowledge uh, of theoretical foundations in mathematics. So they're all about, you know, meta mathematics um, mo most of the time, right? And they can develop complex algorithms, advanced scientific research, right? They operate in a world of uh, rigorous analysis, clearly defined concepts and uh, proven facts, right? But the digital skills in demand today, right? Uh, as described by you know many um, uh, many employers uh, you know and the labor market studies and you know and all around the world, uh, I believe that it is of a different kind. You know uh, the 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 skills that MDEC has always been talking about. Uh, it's 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 different, right? It's not so much of an academic kind of skills, right? Uh, it involves the ability to interact with human beings, of course, and at the same time to create easy to use software solutions right for real world problems right this is what software engineers do right uh, with many a times with very limited resources right uh, in a highly unreliable and dynamically changing environment okay so we are not trying to diminish the importance of computer science uh, as a discipline because i believe that there's a place for that and you know, computer scientists plays a very, very important role in changing uh, the world as, as, as a matter of fact, right? But what we need is the driving force of digital innovation and advancement, right? Uh, uh, of digital professionals, right? And they are largely uh, missing in the world uh, labor market today, right? Uh, and, you know, we need to be creative problem solvers with communications and soft skills and ability to utilize right scientific innovations which is done by the computer scientist uh, to make a difference uh, in real life okay so i hope that was clear right uh, and also just to make it clearer software engineers are not uh, software engineering is not uh, data science right software engineering uh, is Software engineers are not data engineers or data scientists. And this picture, this slide that I'm showing right now makes it clear, okay? So there is an overlap, like what I say, but I still feel that, you know, and you might say that I'm biased, but I still feel that with a good grounding in software engineering, 
will give you the advantage that you will need later on if you decide to branch into uh, to become a data scientist or data engineer, okay, or AI or machine learning for that matter. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna touch a bit on software engineering career path. Um, you know, if, if you are interested, uh, this is a very formal picture. Obviously, uh, this is not fixed in stone. That doesn't mean if you start as a software engineer, this is your path. No, not necessary, like me, right? I started as a software engineer. It gives me a solid foundation of understanding how things work, how to program. But I ended up as a product manager now, a digital product manager now. And at the same time, before I became a product manager, right, I was a UI UX designer, right? So again, this is not like fixed in stone. This is uh, this is an example of what it can look like. Okay, if you were to keep if you keep your career as a software engineer, so you started off as a software engineer or junior software engineer, and then you became a senior software engineer, right? And then you became and then you 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 became a lead software engineer, and then that's when that you'll need to choose a path, right? Whether you want to continue to focus on the technical side of things, meaning you still love coding, uh, or you would like to go uh, to the management path. Now, in many technical careers, uh, this is the tool path that you can, you can choose in, in, in most companies, right? You'll come to a point of time uh, in terms of career progression. So if you still like to you know, build products, build stuff, code, then the technical path is where you can take. And then you will end up becoming a distinguished engineer in certain companies or a principal engineer, some of sometimes they call it, or became a CTO for that for that matter. Okay. So in terms of man, if you choose the management route, then you became an engineering manager, uh, engineering director, engineering VP. Now these positions are different. These are mainly management roles whereby you will perhaps you know be in charge of building the teams. Right, you will be in charge of uh, putting the team and making sure that we have enough resources. You know that they have enough time. Uh, you will, by and large, perhaps be dealing more with the client side rather than you know the engineering side or the product management side of things. Okay, so I hope that's uh, uh, clear for you. Again, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, drop in uh, the comment. Uh, so that we can come back to you uh, later. So for those who have just, you know, joined us, uh, uh, my name is Howie. I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Forward School. Uh, what I am covering right now is basically I'm giving an introduction of, you know, uh, software engineering and, you know, what exactly it is and why it is important. And at this point in time, we are just talking about the software engineering career path. Okay. So I hope uh, this is this is clear for, for everyone. Um, and my next slide is uh, on the Nitro degree in Applied Software Engineering that Forward School is offering. Now, this is, um, you know, these programs, uh, th this program that we have created uh, have one aim, and basically that is to produce uh, highly employable software engineers okay, with the skills, knowledge, and hands-on experience that employers require. But more than that, right, uh, we will focus on the human skills as well because the, there's no point you having all the skills in the world, but yet you do not know how to work with people, okay? So that's what we are focusing on. This is, uh, this is basically, you know, the slide is basically showing our two-year program. Uh, it's uh, split into six uh, semesters. Now, if you take this and if you look at other software engineering programs or courses out there, by and large, uh, there is some resemblance. But I would say that uh, we, the modules that you're looking right now, it's very uh, on trend or, or rather not. I wouldn't say trend, right? Uh, in a sense that we are using some of the latest uh, tools, some of the latest platforms, and some of the latest and more known uh, frameworks and languages to teach, right? Uh, 
And so, and so what you will find different in forward school is that, and because we are technically um, not directly under the Ministry of Education in a sense, we have the flexibility or we can afford to go extremely fast in terms of changing our syllabus. Uh, at this point in time, uh, our two-year nitro degree in applied software engineering, we are working very closely with MBAC as well as the Jabatan Kamahiran uh, 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 Malaysia uh, to, to make our nitro degree into a level four uh, diploma, okay? But through the TBAC route, uh, which we hope to contribute immensely uh, in. All right. So this is an overview of typically, you know, when we talk about software engineering, uh, what you will be learning. In the case of our uh, of, of forward school's nitro degree in applied software engineering, uh, these are things that these are the big picture that you will uh, that we will be covering and we will be teaching you. Uh, first is the back end web, right? So just to uh, make sure that you know our our form five school leavers here understand right some of these terms you might not be very familiar with them so I'll take a bit of time to explain uh, what what are these right so back end web what's back end web so when you go to any web application let's say a website right or Facebook for that matter all web applications primarily have two parts one is the back end and the other is the front end, which we are covering as well, right? In any software engineering, they will teach you this, right? Back end and front end. Now, the front end, what is front end? Front end is basically what you see, right? The colors, the layout, you know, the motion, you know, sometimes, you know, when you go to some website, uh, it will, something will bounce and things like that. So th those are JavaScript, right? HTML and CSS, right? Uh, and the back end basically is uh, actually the heart, the key, right? So I'm sure on any web application or website you have gone to, you know, you have filled up a form before. So when you fill up the form, that's the front end. The form itself is the front end, right? What you see, you know, the form fields, the buttons, all that is front end. Now, when you fill up the form and when you hit enter or when you submit, where does it go to, right? It goes to the back end. So the back end is basically your database where you store all the information uh, that you know people has been submitting. So you can imagine for a site like Facebook, right? Their back end is enormous, highly complex, right? Because it's storing so many information, right? And they are not just storing information, they are learning about you. And that's where machine learning, data science comes in. Okay, which we do cover in our uh, course as well. Okay, data science. Second is so clear. Everyone is clear about the back end web, right? Roughly, I'm I'm I'm, I'm painting it simplistically so that uh, you can understand. Okay. Second thing that we cover is uh, the fundamentals of computer science. We still believe that computer science is important, like what I've mentioned earlier, and we will be covering the fundamentals and ensuring that uh, you have. A good understanding of computer science, okay? Because uh, without a very good solid foundation in computer science, uh, you won't be able to understand algorithms or creating algorithms, okay? Uh, you will be able to, without computer science, you know, and, and, and understanding of algorithms, you will be using a lot of frameworks, but you might not know how to create your own libraries, right? So this is what we want our graduates to be able to do as well. Third is data science, okay? So for data science, um, I'm sure we all know what data science is in the gist, okay? Basically, it's using data and learning about them, right? And like the example that I have mentioned, Facebook, right? They have an enormous data about you because you, on a daily basis, you like things, you commented on your friend's wall, uh, you upload your photos, you upload your videos. What Facebook is really doing is whatever that you are giving to Facebook, uh, uploading up on Facebook or all the interactions that we have done on Facebook, Facebook is actually learning about everything that you do. So if you upload a lot of photos of food, they will know that you are someone that potentially likes food. 
So when they know that, they will then surface out advertisements that's relevant to you. Maybe the next time around, they will show you an ad that's you know about a recipe or a restaurant, right? Or so 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 data science is key in doing all that, you know. So so that's data science in in simplistically speaking. Uh, and then we will also be teaching you mobile application development. So that's your so we will be teaching Android development. Okay, uh, because we felt that Android development will give you a very good foundations, which then you can branch out to learn Apple iOS. Okay, so but we will be focusing on the Android development for our mobile development modules. Okay, and then you know we have the front end web which I've covered, and then we have software product development. So we will be teaching you in terms of you know the fundamentals of product management, how do uh, different teams work together how do you as a software engineer work with the designers how do you as a software engineer work with the stakeholders the product managers right and what kind of tools you will be using to work in teams right so we'll be covering things like github.com uh, it's a it's a it's a it's, it's where you store all your codes all the codes that you've written it's stored there but more importantly github is uh, it enables many people to be contributing to the code, right? In an efficient manner and stable environment, okay? We will also be touching on entrepreneurship. So we feel that it is very important because, you know, maybe after going through a software engineering course, right? You are entrepreneurial. You wanted to come out and, you know, start your own software development company, right? Uh, like the video that I've shown you, you know, the guy is, a, the guy is an entrepreneur. He, he started a software uh, development house. So for you to do that, you know, and we recognize that a lot of young people would like to choose that path, uh, though we would, you know, recommend you to work with the software house first, learn the ropes, then be your own founder, right? Uh, but what I'm trying to say here is that we value entrepreneurship at Forward School. We will be teaching you how contract works so that at the very least, you know how a software development contract works. Whether is it you're going to be helping your future company do that or whether you do it, it you know, you becoming your own boss and understanding all these contracts, right? And then the last but not least, industrial engagement, right? So uh, we have, uh, we will be organizing designathons and hackathons with our hiring partners. Uh, and you will definitely have the opportunity to work very, very closely with the industry. Our campus is a row of nine shop houses, and we are also a co-working space as well as a co-living space. Community to us is extremely important, and therefore we are putting together in, the, in one place, you know, startups, some SMEs in which that you can work with all under the same uh, roof. Okay, so uh, in light of the pandemic, right, um, and what I've mentioned earlier about uh, in terms of tech education or education in tech, uh, it's ripe for disruption. And what, and we do understand that, you know, uh, situations are bad currently, and which is why we have some financial uh, aids in the sense. Uh, this is not particularly a financial aid. This is actually a very intentional program. I've mentioned it very briefly earlier. Uh, it is on the student sponsorship program. Now, this program uh, is newly established. Uh, it's a fund. I would say that it's more of a funding program. Uh, we aim to create the next generation of innovators, right? Through the industry investing in the students, okay, in exceptional Malaysian youth who wants to build up, uh, who wants to build a career in technology, specifically passionate in software uh, engineering. Uh, this program is created in tandem with, uh, like what I say, the industry players, technology companies. Uh, at the moment, we have 18 hiring uh, companies uh, and the recipients, right? Uh, if you are selected, we at this point in time, we have around 20 seats um, and the recipients will be funded if you are accepted to pursue their studies with us for two years at Forward School without uh, needing to pay a single cent. Okay, uh, It will start as a free interest loan from the company that have picked you, but if you do 
well in forward school, basically it will automatically convert to a full sponsorship. But what is really unique and what we are doing different here is that it is considered a work plus study program. What it means is that, and this is something that I personally as a founder uh, believe in, and I wish that you know it would like that. I learn much, much more being at work than in school. That's the reality of it. And which is why, you know, I wanted to create a school that, um, that, that, that focuses on that, that giving students the opportunity to work very closely with the industry from the onset, right? And we are doing that through this program, through this Nitro degree program, uh, specifically on the student sponsorship program. Uh, what this means is that if you are being sponsored and selected, one week of that one week, one or two days of the week, you will be working for your sponsoring company. And you will, at the same time, also studying with us. So, for example, in a week, let's say you have a five-day week, right? Uh, four days, you'll be at forward school. And the other one day, you'll be with your sponsoring company. And at the same time, um, what is unique about this program is that we, we will be guaranteeing you a job. Okay, so a job will be there waiting for you with a minimum salary of 3,000 ringgit. Okay, so another financial uh, program, uh, financial aid program that uh, we have at Forward School, and this is uh, equally groundbreaking in a sense, we believe that we are the first uh, actually in Malaysia or maybe even in Southeast Asia uh, that uh, have this. This is what we call the income share uh, agreement. Okay. Uh, basically, what it means in the GIS is that you to enroll in our two-year uh, natural degree in applied software engineering, you don't need to pay a single cent except for three thousand uh, dollars as an initial payment upon enrollment if you are accepted. Okay, so three thousand is all you need to pay off, and then the rest you only pay after the program when we have linked you up with a job in a sense. We are confident that if you are able to survive these two years, right, uh, you will find a job. So for that, we are confident. Obviously, we will link you up, right, in a sense. But what we are saying is that we are confident that what you'll be learning in terms of the skills that you'll be picking up will be relevant at the end of the day. And there shouldn't be any issue for you to find a fulfilling tech career as a software engineer right or as a pm sometimes you can you, you can do that so we will help you for that if not we won't get paid right so 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 that's 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 what we have in terms of the income share agreement uh, of course you know uh, let me highlight a bit more and we can take this offline right the isa uh, basically also means that at the end of the two years and once you have a job we will be taking a certain percentage of your salary, right? And there will be a cap, um, uh, which means that you will not uh, you will not be paying more uh, or too much, right? So who knows? Maybe you come out and then you get you know like a ten k salary, right? So we, we we have all this mechanism in place in which that it will uh, be fair for you and for us. So in a way, for the income share agreement, we are, in a sense, investing uh, in you uh, as well, okay? Uh, for those especially who cannot uh, afford, okay? So that's the ISA. Last but not least, okay, you might be asking, you know, how do you uh, get started? You, know, um, uh, you have heard from me and you say that, great, Howie, you know, I really like what uh, you have just shared. Uh, I'm going to enroll, I'm going to find out more about software engineering. But my suggestion is this. My suggestion is that before you even enroll, right, uh, in any software engineering or even computer science, right, if you wish, um, before that, uh, we have a forward school aptitude test. Now, this aptitude test will test you uh, for the following, right, logical thinking and problem solving, pattern and syntax recognition, ability to follow complex procedures, uh, being resourceful. Okay. These are the key skills um, in terms of aptitude, right? We're not really talking about skills yet. What I'm talking about is aptitude, right? Your IQ, right? In a sense, 
these are extremely important, right? If you uh, want to become a software engineer, and we are uh, this test is free, so I would encourage you that you know before you decide on a software engineering career or a computer science career or technology career in a sense, uh, it will be helpful to take such a test. And we at Forward School, we are providing it for free. All you need to do is to fill up this simple form, should take you less than two minutes, and then we will follow up with you uh, with a link where you can take this aptitude test online. So basically, it's just 20 questions. You'll need to complete it in 30 minutes. And at the end of it, you will get a free simple report showing you where you are, okay? Uh, match up against the people that has taken before you, okay? As, a, as, an, as, a, as, a, as an average in a sense, right? So that at the very least, you get a sense, right? So if you do the test and you score above 10, then I would encourage you to pursue it, right? But if you fall below 10, again, I'm not saying that, you know, you should forget about software engineering, but what it tells us and you is that we'll need a bit more work, right? So, so, so I hope that this, you know, aptitude test will be very helpful to you. Uh, it has been very helpful to those who uh, uh, have come through our doors. Uh, we, uh, it's not out in the public, this aptitude test. Uh, it's only for students who enrolled uh, in our school. Um, but as of today, uh, if you fill up this very simple form, uh, we will send you the link to take the aptitude test. So I think this is, this is, this is the very good first step that you can uh, take today. Okay, so this is the URL. It's a uh, it's a URL shortener. It's bit.ly slash nitro decree. Submit the form, and then we will follow up uh, with uh, a link. Okay, to uh, to the aptitude test, which you can take for free. Okay. Okay, so I guess uh, that's all that I have to share. Uh, and I would like to open the time now for any questions that you might have. Uh, do we have questions? Let me see. Okay, we have one question from uh, Shani. Uh, you're asking, will the software engineer course be very hard? Um, this is very subjective, right? And I guess my question uh, to you is, uh, what's your definition of hard, right? Because in, in my opinion, everything is hard in a way, right? Anything good is hard. Uh, a fulfilling career is hard. Getting a high pay before you can get that, everything that you're going to do, it's going to be hard, right? So nothing comes easy, but at the same time, I'd like to you know, assure you uh, that if you enroll in the right uh, school, right, uh, that focuses on being hands-on and the instructors are from the industry, uh, I don't think it will be impossible. If not, we won't be you know, setting up a school and offering this course. And I think that's why uh, we are here. So, so, so I would say that the course in itself is not hard. And I think the best step forward for you right now is to basically take the aptitude uh, test uh, and you will find it out yourself, right? So going through the aptitude test, it is not a programming test, right? Uh, it is um, uh, a IQ test of sort, right? Uh, Mensa of sort, uh, not too difficult. If you are able to score above 10, then I would say that it's, it's not going to be very hard, right? It's still challenging, but it's not going to be very hard for, for you, okay? So I hope I answered that question uh, um, clear enough for, for you, okay? Do you have any more questions? Okay, if no, uh, again, feel free to reach out to us anytime or you can, you know, for those who are 
uh, will be watching the replay of this video um, you know, later on. Uh, feel free to leave your comments or questions um, here in the commenting section or simply uh, reach out to me uh, and, 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 and you can email me at howie at forwardschool.co or again, you know, go to Facebook, uh, search Forward School, or you can visit our website at forwardschool.co. Okay. So with that, I would like to again uh, thank Embeck um, and my digital maker for giving me this opportunity to share with everyone an introduction of software engineering. I hope that, you know, in one way or another, my sharing has inspired you to learn more about software engineering. Uh, I cannot emphasize enough that uh, the future and the digital economy uh, needs more software engineers, needs uh, people who understand technology and are creators of technology, uh, not merely just consumers of technology. So with that, uh, thank you. Uh, I will see you around. Again, feel free to reach out to any of us at Forward School if you have any questions. Thank you.